Reciprocity theorem. Effectively, reciprocity theorem is a quite famous theorem in different uh, fields of physics in general, not only electromagnetics. Uh, if we have two sets of sources, source one, which constitutes of uh, electric current G1 and magnetic current M1, and another set which is constitute of G2 and M2. So the fields due to the first set of sources at the location of the second set will be the same as if we interchange the position of G1 and M1 to be the location of 2 and the location of 2 would be at the location of 1. So effectively the interrelation between the set of sources 1 and set of source 2 uh, is reciprocal uh, or in other words if the two uh, set of sources are interchanged the same relation would be the same, or the relation between the, the sources would be the same. Mathematically, we can start with Max's equation for source 1 and source 2. So, the field due to source 1 can be represented as the rotation of E1 equal minus G omega H1 minus M1. And the rotation of the magnetic field H1 equal G omega epsilon E1 plus G1. On the other hand, the rotation of the induced electric field E2 due to the second set would be minus G omega mu H2 minus M2. And the rotation of magnetic field H2 would be G omega epsilon E2 plus G2. Now, by applying uh, the vector identity that the divergence of A cross B equals curl A dot B minus curl B dot A, so we can say that the divergence of E1 cross H2 minus E2 cross H1 equals what? Effectively, the divergence of E1 cross H2 would be curl E1 dot H2 curl E1 dot H2 so it would be minus G omega mu H1 dot H2 minus M dot H2 okay? So this is the first term. The second term it would be minus curl B dot A curl H2 dot E1. So in this case it would be G omega epsilon E2 dot E1 plus J2 dot E1. So this is the first Term. The second term would be minus the divergence of E2 curl, uh, E2 cross H1. So in this case, according to this vector identity, the divergence of E2 cross H1 would be curl E2 dot H1. So it would be minus j omega mu h2 dot h1 minus m2 dot h1 and let us remember that the first one it was minus j omega mu h1 dot h2 minus m1 dot h2 so by subtracting this term from this term the term minus j omega mu h1 dot h2 would be subtracted from minus j omega mu h2 dot h1. 
and the remaining part here it would be minus m1 dot h2 minus minus would be plus m2 dot h1 m2 dot h1 plus minus m1 dot h2 and the last term it would be care h1 here h1 b here is h1 dot e2 and we have negative negative it would be positive so curl h1 dot e2 so it would be j omega epsilon e1 dot e2 plus j1 dot e2 and previously we have minus j omega epsilon e2 dot e1 plus j2 dot e1 so by subtracting these two terms this term will be eliminated with this term and the remaining part it would be j1 dot e2 minus j2 dot e1 okay so this is divergence of E1 cross H2 minus E2 cross H1. It equals G1 dot E2 minus J2 dot E1 plus M2 dot H1 minus M1 dot H2. Now by applying the divergent theorem, the divergent theorem states that the integration over the volume of the divergence of any vector equals the integration over a closed surface of this vector dot ds so the integration over the volume of this term equals the integration over the volume of this term but the integration over the volume of this the first term equals the integration over the closed surface of the vector dot ds so according to this we have proved that now the integration over a closed surface E1 cross H2 minus E2 cross H1 dot ds equals the integration over the volume E2 dot J1 minus E1 dot J2 plus H2 dot M1 M2 uh, minus H2 dot M1 dv. Okay? And here the closed surface is the closed surface which includes all these sources and the volume is the volume inside this closed surface. Now let us perform these integrations for special cases. So already we have proved that this is the integration. So if S enclose no sources such that there is no source inside the volume in this case j1 j2 m2 m1 are zero so the integration here would be zero so means that the integration over the closed surface e1 cross h2 minus e2 cross h1 dot ds equals zero or in other words the electric field one cross the magnetic field two equals the electric field two cross the magnetic field one or in other words the effect of the electric field one on the magnetic field two is the same as the electric field two uh, in the magnetic field one so if i'm going to replace e1 and h uh, e1 h1 and E2, H2, if I'm going to replace them in their positions, so we can read it as E2 cross H1 equals E1 cross H2. So if I start from 1 to 2, as if I put 1 instead of 2 and 2 instead of 1. So this is reciprocal. On the other hand, if the surface S bound is perfect conductor, if the enclosed surface is perfect conductor, in the case of perfect conductor, 
the tangential electric field it would be zero and the normal magnetic field it would be zero one from uh, the boundary condition of the tangential electric field and one from the boundary condition of the normal magnetic flux density so in this case both the integration e1 cross h2 and e2 cross h1 it would be zero in this case along the surface because the tangential electric field is zero and the normal magnetic field is zero so the integration over the surface if the surface is perfect electric conductor it would be zero so in this case the integration with respect to the sources e2 dot j1 minus e1 dot j2 plus h2 dot m2 sorry h1 dot m2 minus h2 dot m1 dv equals zero now by separating E1 dot J2 E1 dot J2 minus H1 dot M2 dV it would equal E1 dot J2 minus H1 dot M2 the other side it would equal E2 J1 minus H2 M1 what does it mean? It means that the projection of the electric and the magnetic field at the sources to equals the projection of the electric and the magnetic field of source 2 at the position of source 1. So if I have been interchanging the source 1 and source 2, we can find that the same result is the same. So, in this case, if I interchange the position of source 1 and source 2, and make source 1 as the location of source 2, and source 2 as the location of source 1. Now, if I am looking for the field from source 1 at the source 2, it would be E2 dot J1 minus H2 dot M1, would equal e1 dot j2 minus h1 dot m2 which means that the system response e1 or e2 is not a change when the source and observation point are interchanged so if i am interchanging the position of the sources the same fields would be the same so the system response e1 or e2 is not a change when the source and observation point are interchanged. That is E2 caused by J2 at J1 is the same as E1 caused by J1 at J2. Okay. This is known as the reciprocity theorem. And effectively the reciprocity theorem uh, has quite important in solving uh, microwave networks especially if we have different ports so what will be the situation if I'm feeding from port 1 to port 2 or from port 2 to port 1 we will find that the reciprocity theorem in this case will play a very important role in solving such problems alright